I would expect you to be very conscientious about spills, how they're cleaned up. And you want to be very careful when you're you know, pouring it into these containers not to get any on the ground or in the environment. Our skin is just as porous as opening up your mouth. You might as well drink the stuff because it's still going to get into the bloodstream. It has to be properly contained. Everything should be made environmentally safe. Uh, the environment that we live in is very precious. Working safely in the automotive shop. Hazardous waste, laws and procedures for handling and disposal. Hazardous waste is a serious concern to our future, making it very important to understand proper disposal procedures and the handling of any substances you work with in the automotive shop. In the following program, you'll be introduced to agencies such as the EPA and OSHA. Guidelines will be discussed for determining various characteristics of hazardous waste, and you'll learn how to handle and dispose of these wastes properly. The Environmental Protection Agency, known as the EPA, has jurisdiction in all 50 states and is in charge of monitoring and enforcing all environmental regulations passed by Congress. The EPA advises Congress on how and why environmental laws need to be made or changed. If a company fails to comply with these regulations, the EPA can enforce the regulations through fines, imprisonment, closure of business, and federal fund withholding from projects supported by federal tax dollars. Most states have their own environmental regulatory agencies modeled after the EPA. For example, Fire marshals usually work closely with the EPA, especially when it comes to the installation and maintenance of any operation that's considered a fire or explosion hazard. Keep in mind, many states have established environmental agencies that may have stiffer regulations than the federal agencies. OSHA is a government-funded agency and has the enforcement powers to protect the health and welfare of workers and the workforce. OSHA's regulations apply to all employers and employees. Non-compliance with any of these regulations can mean warnings, fines, imprisonment, and even a ceasing or halt of business in extreme cases, just as with the EPA. OSHA is also responsible for enforcing the Hazard Communication Standard, otherwise referred to as the Employee Right to Know. These regulations deal directly with employee safety in terms of clothing, equipment, chemical use, hazardous waste handling, etc. Under the employee right to know, manufacturers and importers are required to send an evaluation of the hazards of every chemical with each first shipment. The Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, will state information pertaining to the ingredients of every chemical such as physical and chemical characteristics, fire and explosion hazards, health hazards, safe handling, use and disposal, and control and protection methods. Any significant changes should be sent directly to the customer via a new MSDS, and every employee must have access to them at all times. All containers must be properly labeled with warnings and directions for use. There are many substances within the automotive shop that can be classified as hazardous. When working with any new or unknown substances, you should always treat them as hazardous waste. Hazardous waste can take the form of solid, liquid, or gas. It has the potential to damage, either directly or indirectly, the air, water, or soil quality in the environment, including effects on humans and wildlife. If materials aren't identifiable by regulations, there are characteristics to look for in helping to determine whether a substance is hazardous or not. These characteristics will show a substance as ignitable, corrosive, reactive, or toxic. Ignitable materials can catch fire so look for the temperature or flash point of the ignitable material listed on the container. Gasoline and cleaning solvents are a good example. 
Corrosive substances eat through materials and human tissue. Some examples are floor cleaners and battery acid. Reactive materials can be explosive and produce toxic gases when mixed with water, air, or other materials. Toxic substances have the potential to leach hazardous chemicals into the environment, which can be determined by special laboratory testing. Used engine oil and sludge from shop drains are considered toxic. If not disposed of or recycled properly, these materials are hazardous to the environment and special cleanup and removal procedures would have to be followed. Now let's move on to another common work area in the automobile, the battery. A battery is considered hazardous if leaking or corroded due to the sulfuric acid released, causing serious burns if contacted with skin. Rubber gloves and safety glasses should always be worn as a precaution. When replacing the battery, the automotive shop will take the battery and recycle it through a battery supplier or recycler. When storing the batteries for pickup, keep them off the floor by putting them on a pallet. Batteries should be stored in a well-ventilated area. This will disclose any gases that are naturally emitted from the batteries, such as hydrogen Waste oil is also considered hazardous. This includes transmission and power steering fluids. These fluids are ignitable substances and should be kept away from any source of flame, including cigarettes, matches, or tools using flame. Remember that with normal use, engine oil does become contaminated. Contact could produce toxic effects within your system, causing breathing difficulty, skin irritation, and headaches. It's important to keep in mind, waste oil is a carcinogen. When storing waste oil at the automotive shop, specific regulations need to be followed. Oil stored in drums mustn't have any cracks or gaps. Containers should be tightly closed, except when adding or removing oil. The containers and containment areas should be checked at least once a week for leakage and deterioration. Remember, all fluids with a petroleum base can be collected in the same container. Oil, automatic transmission fluid, and power steering fluids are good examples of this. A recycler will collect these oils if mixed together, but under no conditions will they take oil that has been mixed with antifreeze. Antifreeze has a heavy metal content and is deadly to the environment. When disposing of used oil filters, drain the oil for at least eight hours. Once thoroughly drained, the filter can be disposed of. Be sure to get a receipt or certificate showing the gallons taken and date of service. Keep the receipts for future protection. When using a lift to raise and lower a car, it may run via hydraulics or electricity. Shops are starting to move towards electric lifts due to the potential leakage of oil from hydraulic lifts. Cleanup can be costly and procedures will vary depending on your location. Coolant, also known as antifreeze, is another waste substance you'll need proper procedures to handle. Check the container label for any of the four hazardous characteristics mentioned previously. Coolant can enter your body through skin absorption, inhalation, ingestion, and skin or eye contact, so precautions are necessary. Protective clothing, safety glasses, and gloves should be worn at all times. If used coolant gets on your skin, wash it off immediately with soap and water. When disposing of coolant, be sure to check with local authorities for proper disposal procedures. Never dump coolant into the groundwater system, including the septic system, it has a heavy metal content and is deadly to the environment. Dispose of coolant the same as you would motor oil, but never mix the two. If you cross-contaminate oil with coolant, the recycler will not take it. While servicing the cooling system, you could be dealing with refrigerants requiring special safety handling procedures. An ideal refrigerant should be stable, non-combustible, non-toxic, and a non-irritating chemical. 
Researchers believe that the use of certain refrigerants have contributed to the hole in the ozone layer responsible for filtering out most of the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. Scientists believe that the increase in ultraviolet radiation can cause an increase in skin cancers, damage to fish and other aquatic life, a suppression of the human immune response system, an increase in ground-level ozone, increases in cataracts, global warming, and damage to crops. An agreement was made by the United States and other nations of the world in 1987 to phase out ozone-depleting chemicals by the year 2000. Because of this, R12, the most commonly used refrigerant, is now being replaced with an environmentally friendly refrigerant known as R134A. Due to the effects of refrigerant, you must be sure to wear safety glasses and rubber gloves at all times. Refrigerant can freeze your eyes, skin, or anything it comes in contact with, causing irreversible damage. Never expose refrigerant to an open flame, as poisonous gases may be generated. When servicing refrigerant, note that R134A is not interchangeable with R12 so there will be a need for separate sets of hoses, gauges, charging, and recycling equipment. The service fittings that accommodate R134A are the quick disconnect type, as opposed to a screw-on Schrader valve used for R12. This difference helps avoid contamination of the system with refrigerant or oil. Also, containers holding R12 are white, while containers holding R134A are light blue. Refrigerants should be recycled at all times without exception, and material disposal procedures followed. Never, under any circumstances, release refrigerant into the atmosphere. Refrigerants can cause severe physical and environmental damage. Like refrigerant, Special equipment is needed when servicing the brake assembly, such as the brake dust machine and wet sink. Brake dust becomes airborne very easily and can be invisible to the naked eye. If not wearing the proper safety equipment, it could be ingested or inhaled into your system. The dust will accumulate in the lungs over time and with long-term exposure can be fatal. Always use containment equipment when servicing the brake assembly. Never eat, drink, or smoke where brake work is being done and wear an OSHA-approved respirator. When the job is completed, dispose of the mask immediately after use. Never reuse a contaminated mask. When your work is completed, be sure to remove your work clothing before going home. Chemical transference can lead to contamination. Even the smallest exposure to petroleum solvents, lubricants, and fuels can cause cancer of the skin and leukemia, especially in children. When recycling tires, it's important to dispose of them properly. Tires won't disintegrate over time and take up a lot of room in landfills, characterizing them as hazardous. Arrangements can be made with a removal contractor or chipping facility to process the tires for recycling. When waiting for the contractor to pick up the used tires, stack them neatly to prevent fire or health hazards. Recycled tires are now being used in a variety of ways. They can be manufactured as a material used for road surfaces and are also responsible for creating artificial reefs in the ocean, to name a few. As an automotive technician, you'll need to be prepared when disposing of or handling any hazardous wastes. The use of specific safety procedures will help protect you and the environment. Now let's review some key points of this program. Regulations and procedures enforced by the EPA or OSHA may vary depending on where you live. Always check with your local or state municipality for correct handling and disposal procedures. Oil storage containers should be tightly closed except when adding or removing oil. Check containers and the containment area at least once a week for signs of leakage or deterioration. 
Refrigerants should be recycled at all times without exception, and material disposal procedures followed. Never, under any circumstances, release refrigerant into the atmosphere. Refrigerants can cause severe physical and environmental damage. Using the proper safety equipment and procedures will establish the auto shop as a professional service, will protect you from harm, and keep the environment safer for future generations.